Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room where today we're going to be doing a little bit of collections management. And I have actually shown part of this collection before, a good chunk of this collection before in a video I will link to in a card here, showing my entire straw hat collection, which is a large portion of my hats. But I also have other hats from the 1930s, 40s, and 50s in my accessory collection, I suppose, in the Closet Historian's closet as it were. Um, and you have seen how I store some of those things in my closet tour videos over the years in these Ikea boxes, in some boot boxes, other big large cardboard boxes that were used to perhaps ship the hats to me in the first place when I bought them on eBay or whatever. But um, that's not a very good archival or like long-term storage solution. But thanks to the support of my patrons, I was able to invest in some better archival materials like these boxes from a company called Talus. Um, this is the only time I've ever shopped with them, but I had a great experience. Um, I will let you know that boxes like these are, you know, heavy and therefore, although they were shipped to me flat, the shipping cost as much if not more than one or two of these archival boxes, which is a bummer. But of course they were coming all the way from New York to me here in Colorado. So they had a long way to go. I consider, I considered, you know, the shipping into my, how many boxes I invested in. And I consider this an investment in my collection in the longevity of my collection. So I didn't mind, you know, that this was going to be a larger investment to be able to do this kind of thing. And it's only thanks to my patrons that I was able to do this, but I think it's important. Like I, consider these hats part of my personal wardrobe and but I also consider my collection collecting of accessories to be you know protecting them for future generations I'm I hope I won't be the last person to be able to wear and use these items and it's certainly not the last person to be able to appreciate them so upgrading my long-term storage when it comes to something like my hats is something that feels important to me not only on like a personal level but also on a, like a curatorial level if I am I'm they wouldn't let me curate actual museums so I just decided to buy a bunch of vintage stuff and have my own museum, you know, because no one can require a doctorate for that. Haha, -ha, how do you like that? But that was my work around there. But I had to assemble these flat packed boxes with some PVA, acid free PVA glue that they recommended. So I went ahead and assembled all these boxes. I now have them sitting here ready to go. And I have some acid free tissue paper, unbuffered, whatever that means. I'll put it on the screen. So I have some unbuffered tissue paper, my archival boxes. Now all we need are a bunch of hats. So I'll bring all the hats down and I will go through each of my hats and do a bit of a show and tell as I pack them into their new homes. Yes, I am in my pajamas. We're on the floor because I have, I'm surrounded by hats and I'm surrounded by boxes. These are my new archival cardboard boxes. Um, let's not talk about the fact that I found out you could buy these that fold together instead of glued together, which would have saved me a lot of time and hassle. Although it would have been more expensive, but oh man, it would have been worth it. Yikes. But we're not going to think about it. Here we are. We have boxes. We have hats. I have unbuffered tissue paper to wrap them in. Let's get started. This is ready to go as well. I think I'll probably go through this tissue pretty fast, honestly. Um, but we'll try and use it sparingly. Now, if we were going off of like best practice for storing like museum pieces or textiles or hats or anything like this, anything that has potential of organic material or potential of having like once having been exposed to a human. So like things, these hats, you know, technically they have makeup stains maybe on the inside of them or, you know, technically sweat stains that are like 60 years old, depending on the age of the hat. So they have interacted with humans, so they're not pristine in that sense. Who knows what they were, what was used to make them, so they're not pristine in that sense. Um, so uh, although these boxes and this tissue paper is acid free, the hats themselves are not really acid free. Um, and I am going to be storing them next to one another, with one another. In an ideal situation, every single hat would have its own box, but this is not a museum, sadly. It is just my closet. I'm just trying to upgrade it a little bit by really getting halfway there, which is as, as much as I can hope for right now. So at least the boxes and packing materials are kind of inert, even if the hats are not and they will be stored with one another. So technically one hat could leach problems onto another if there are such things. And I do keep a lot of like chunks of cedar and sachets of like anti-moth stuff in my bedroom, like which I use. I use my bedroom as kind of an extended closet as we know if you've seen my closet tour. I'll put a card up to that here. Um, so I do keep a lot of like moth repellent stuff around because I'm extremely concerned about my wool hats and about my vintage suiting. So I do try and stay on top of like upgrading my moth storage as much as I can whenever possible. But since I'm moving every hat around, I will show them to you. And I'm not exactly sure how I want to do this. I think I want to put like low shallow crowned big straw hats in this guy. 
So that's what we're going to start with, and we're going to start with this hat right next to me here, which is actually one of my newest acquisitions. I just recently invested in this hat. This is a lovely shallow crowned, probably probably 1940s um, hat, maybe 1950s. Let's see. It is made by John Wanamaker, and it's got a New York Creations label, 22 and a half size. Um, this is just a gorgeous like little peaked straw. There's just rows and rows of straw that are sewn together. It has a grow grain bow ribbon trim and then another like grow grain in here with a small, very stretched out elastic to hold it onto your head. Um, this one does have some soiling on the inside. I just don't tend to care about that kind of thing. It's me. Um, so this, I would use the elastic to keep it onto my head or like pin the elastic to my hair if I were to wear this, but it's very fun and I loved this brown straw color. It's a color I did not have. It's kind of nutmeg, I guess, or maple brown shade. And so I recently invested in this hat. I think it's going to go so well with a lot of my summer clothes. But let's go ahead and give this guy a piece of tissue paper. And it can gently live inside this box here. And i am got another very similar hat. Incredibly similar, really. Here, this is a navy blue straw hat. Again, this one is 22 and a half. Consumer, consumer protection label. The label is a little bit different, so I don't know if it's earlier or later. This is from Honingsbaum in Albany. Um, but again, this one has a little bit of makeup staining on the inside. Um, that's probably been there for a long time. Has a grow grain with elastic again. Um, another, well, it's not even grow grain. It's Petersham, actually. Small difference, but uh, this one has a Petersham trim ribbon. And again, it's just layered straw braids sewn together to create this hat. It's extremely similar. It's very, it's like nearly identical hat, honestly. Um, but again, just like so. I've worn this many, many times over the years. Um, I can show you some photos of me wearing this one. I love a big, shallow, um, crowned straw hat. I'm a big fan of these. Um, so I have, I do try and kind of collect them in every color. This is another, probably from a similar time period. This is probably late 30s, 1940s. This one does have its very fragile veiling still intact. Um, and actually the veiling is still very nice, so I'm not going to mess with it too much here. This one has, again, Peter Shim ribbon bows on the front of it. And again, it's just that layered straw braid sewn together into a large, shallow uh, crowned hat here. Again, we have Peter Shim hat ribbon on the inside. This one, the labels have been removed, but it does still have a hat elastic in here to help keep it on the head. Um, but I have worn this one on my blog before as well, so I can get a couple of pictures of me wearing this as well. Um, it's very, very fun. It's a little bit faded. Um, compared to the other ones color-wise, but it's so stunning that I forgive it. Next up, another large kind of cartwheel kind of hat here. This one, you can tell the fading. Look at the red on the inside, compared to the red on the outside. It's much brighter on the inside there, um, but this is another hat I've just worn to death since I've gotten it. Um, I think this wasn't the, the navy blue and this one were both eBay finds. I do think the other two, well, the, I know the brown one, I just got on Etsy recently. And then the black, I think was another Etsy find. I can't remember because I have been collecting for 10 years, almost, well, yeah, about, about a decade really. Um, so again, <laughs> please forgive me for how many hats we are about to go through today and try and remember I have been collecting for 10 years. And every time I found a bargain, I snapped it up. So. That's how this happened. But again, these are great because you can pin them on the back of your head for like a halo effect. You can pin them tilted low in the front. Um, you can pin them any way, which way you like. This one's in very nice sturdy condition. The top again is faded and a little bit dusty, honestly, but the inside, you can tell how fun and bright red this used to be back in the day. Now, here's a question. Do I need to keep this black straw hat? Because as you can see, we've already had one black straw hat and I have another one sitting here. This one is a little bit smaller um, so it has that going for it. Its elastic is quite stretched out. This is probably, again, a 1940s hat. And it is, you know, really quite good, though. The nice thing about having an untrimmed kind of hat like this is if you're going for a more simple look, you can wear it as is. But if you want to, like, if you're wearing white as the accent color of your outfit, you can always pin on white flowers or red flowers and then make it fit your ensemble better just by pinning something on. Um, and, you know, hats are usually kept on the head with hat pins. And so you can also pin on flowers or pin on ribbons or feathers or whatever you would like for the day. Um, but how am I going to get it in here? That's the, that's the real question. Here, another black straw hat. See, here's why I'm like, do I need this many black straw hats? This one is a little bit more 50s or 60s, I think. 
um, or even later than that. But this one is just, it's a very like, to me, this, for some reason, this hat always reminds me of whichever Batman movie it is that has Catwoman and Anne Hathaway's like outfit at the train station. I think she has like a big hat. And for some reason, this always makes me think of that. It's much more of like a Audrey Hepburn kind of feeling hat. And so, you know, it's a completely different feeling than this one, which is why I have to have both. Look at the size of this hat. It's, it's giant. <laughs> this is actually a modern hat. It's a replica Bergere hat um, of the French 18th century hats. It's a replica one that I purchased on Etsy. I will link to the shop that sells these below. I have two of them. This is the largest size they offered, and this is the next size down. So I have both of these. They used to be a little bit cheaper. They run, I think the price is really inched quite upwards. I think when I was first getting them, they were only like $25 or $28 maybe. And now they run a little bit higher, but maybe they're harder to get. I don't know. Um, but these work very well for 1930s through 1950s style, just as well as they do for uh, like 1750s style. So but these definitely go in here still. Um, this is actually, this black hat is one of the same. It's a bergere just like those. Um, I just have added flowers and a big satin bow to it. And this one honestly is a little bit over the top, but um, it's kind of fabulous. I really love flowers like, uh, these are vintage flowers by the way, but I really like this combination. You'll see this often and I'll show you a couple other things today that have this where it's like daisies, poppies, and like corn flowers. I think these are called, I can't remember, um, all together in a combination. So it's like this red, white, blue, and yellow combo and You'll see that again in a moment here, but this one is like kind of half made by me, kind of half vintage. All right, well, for now, that looks like that's all it's going to fit in this one. Hi there, back again. Um, I just needed to restart our camera, but I have put the two other black hats, straw hats in here. Oh, shoot, where am I going to do with that one? Oh, man, it deserves like its own box. I wish I had a box big enough. This is a like truly absurdly good hat. <sighs> it's got its veil still. The only tear in the veil really is in the back little ribbons, which is nice because there's this full front face veil here. And I can try and include some images of me wearing this hat. Um, but I mean, the flowers, are the flowers a little bit time worn and faded? Some people don't like like aged millinery flowers and they'll take them off and replace them. But I like that it looks vintage. Uh, that doesn't bother me. So these flowers look a little tired, but I'm here for it. Um, but this hat has like a little cap on the inside and you put it like, like that. And I mean, I just think that's fabulous in my opinion. And of course you can put a bobby pin into the cap to keep it on your head at a tilted angle like this with a full veil. Mm, it's gotta be one of my favorites in my collection. It's just, I mean, I love them all. Who are we kidding? but it's just stunning and the veil is in such good sh shape that I'm always trying to be very careful with it. But I almost think we need to like put a piece. Inside here and then on the outside. Goodness, this is another, this is a hat I got really early on in my collecting. And I feel like again, it was like $20. But this is uh, one that actually, it had the cream colored flowers and I added these little like mocha-ish flowers. You probably can't see them, but I added a few that were still kind of faded looking, but just a little bit more contrast in here and added these green leaves in here just because the flowers on this were super faded and I just added a little bit more contrast in there. But I really love the styling on this. It's like barely got uh, like a tip to it in the inside. It does still have a hat elastic here. I think I might've replaced that myself, but I like wearing it like kind of tilted up on the head like this. And like to the side because I just think it's so cute in the summertime. Mm -mm. It's like this ivory, almost like coated or like faux straw. I'm not sure. It has a Petersham ribbon around the wire around the edge. It's interesting, but um, I just love this one. I don't know. There's something about it that I really like. This hat here, I got for $15 at a street fair market. I think I may have shown this in a haul here on the channel, um, but it has wire on the inside to clamp it onto your head. So it's actually quite secure, which is nice. And I have worn this one several times and therefore it has been photographed, I suppose, and is on my blog. So you can see me wearing this one. This one says adjustable. Well, yes, it has these little wires inside to kind of just clip 
onto your head so you can kind of clip it back or you can clip it forward and mess up your hair again yeah but i think this is a really good again 30s through 50s i like i think you can fudge things um i'm not really i'm never about like era specificness so where, where it's like you only can wear 30s things with 30s things i think you can you know fudge the lines between decades very easily um, i think you can make this work with a 1980s outfit for example but i do think this is probably a 50s hat that's my guess it seems like nylon faux straw to me and i'm guessing this is a 50s hat just because of this like kind of domed and cupped seashell sort of shape that seems more 50s to me and a lot of times you know when you're buying vintage online just because the seller says 1930s hat doesn't mean it's necessarily a 1930s hat just because the seller says it's a 1980s hat doesn't necessarily mean it's a 1980s hat so um you know the people selling online especially or even at like a street fair market like where i bought this they might not might not know exactly what they have either so <laughs> you're going for at least for me i'm usually going off the look of it and the condition i can like what I can tell about the condition less than whatever they say the decade is because whatever I'll wear it with any decade I want and uh, make it work and let's see I have this one here this one is by Francie we have another one exclusively with the fashion um, original release patent number even and this is a size 23 23 on the consumer protection label I'm not sure exactly what era this one this it's like a express espresso brown color but it's got a shine gloss finish to the straw here, which does flake off a little bit, but it's mostly still intact. Um, it's some kind of like fine, fine sizal straw that's like been dipped or coated in this shiny, shiny coating. And it has just a Peterson ribbon with a bit of decorative braid trim on it. I again like wearing this one with ivory and brown in the summertime. And again, probably tilted. Oh yeah, <laughs> quite a few straws. Here's the orange one I was talking about a minute ago. It's not, it's like an orangey brown color. And this is a like very, I don't know, Marie Antoinette inspired 1930s or 40s hat. Um, with got a little bit of veiling in the back here and then these velvet flowers on the front of it. Again, I have worn this one uh, so I might have pictures of it somewhere, but it just kind of tilts on like so and you tie the ribbons on, pin it how you would like. A very very cute hat a little bit of a different shape and like this is the kind of thing where it's like you could probably make this out of a straw placemat if you've ever seen people try and make hats out of straw placemats it's like if you got the placemat wet and like put it over a bowl and like scrunched it down and like let it dry with a new shape and pinned at the back you could probably make one of these and that's something we could try sometime let me know if you want to see straw placemat hat you know diy so i wanted to kind of put these in here by size and put the largest at the bottom so here this is another of my larger straw hats. Again, this one's probably 19... It's so hard. 1930s, 40s, 50s. Because, <laughs> like, they don't change too, too dramatically uh, at that time. Or, like, there's just so many styles available when it comes to, like, from the late 30s through the mid 50s. There are a lot of styles available every season. So, like, <laughs> they a lot of them carry over, and it's hard to know exactly what year something is from but this one probably 40s it's my guess it again has a hat elastic in here and this one actually still has quite a bit of elasticity to it and um no label on it it's got veiling peter shim ribbon and then these silk flowers that again have lost a lot of their luster but i still like them i don't mind um and i have worn this one on my blog before or in my life rather and it has been documented that i've worn it on my blog before so you can see a few photos of me in this one as well um of course i need more things with a purple accent um to wear this with because this with like a black dress and purple gloves would be quite fun or like a purple dress would be very fun so i quite like this one let's see if i can fit them in here this is another vintage hat that is again a bit twee it's a bit twee for me honestly and like the question of should i keep this one Again, you see that, that combo of flowers here. Is this one too cutesy for me? Like, I have that black version, and I'm probably going to wear the black version because it's me, right? Should I let go of this one? I think I'm going to put this one in my Etsy shop. I will let go of this very cute hat. I have worn it before. Um, a couple of times. But 
I don't wear it enough, I think. I think it belongs with somebody else. So I'm gonna put this one in my Etsy shop. Look, I eliminated one, kind of. Um, this one behind me, I've shown here on the channel before. Again, one of my favorite like finds ever. This is a 1930s, I would say late 1930s hat. It's got this kind of funny shape to it in the back. I've shown this one on the channel before. It's by the Phyllis May trademark, Chicago, New York, and Paris. This one's actually a size 24, but it just kind of like sits on the head and I think it's just perfect. I love this hat. I think this one, I, if I remember correctly, was $25. And I so rarely see this kind of shape um, and especially like in ivory from this era. And so I was just like over the moon when I found this, especially for under 30 bucks. It was just such a crazy deal. And just goes to show you can get things for, I'll talk about cheaper hats. I've got hats for $25, but I've, I've picked up hats for $10 before. So um, that's how I amassed this many is because I'm a bargain hunter, okay? But this one I just adore and we're gonna put it in here with its other friends. So I'm just scrunching up a little bit of paper and sort of filling the hat a little bit just so that it has something. Let's see, who else do we have? I mean, again, talk about classic. Here's this kind of, oh, I don't know. It looks like a riding hat to me, but like a, it's it was sold to me as a Panama hat, which is kind of what this kind of straws are. These kind of straws are usually called, but it has a larger size net here. And in fact, it says genuine Panama on the inside. So there's, there's that. But again, it's kind of like a, Victorian riding tilted topper situation. But this one's very fun and kind of top hatty, but like, you know, a novelty summer top hat, as it were. I don't have many top hats, really. I don't think I have any top hats right now. This is as close as I get. I'm trying to fit in as many as possible. Here's another one. I know I have photos of this one. And I've actually, I think I've, I've worn this in a lookbook before. I wore it in the Millionaire, Mil Millionaire Milliner lookbook as well, I believe. So I will try and put a clip in of that this one's an open crown hat, so the top of the hat is open like this. Um, I try not to buy these, honestly, but um, there are a lot of open crown hats from the 1930s, 40s, 50s, uh, 30s and 40s mostly. But this one was small-like and toy-like enough. This one's by Valkyrie Modes. Just like a toy of a 1940s hat with this veil on it. Oof! I love this hat. I think this, again, was another one that was like $30 um, or maybe even cheaper than that. I'll try and... If I'm completely wrong and off, I will correct myself here, but I think this one was quite inexpensive. And again, the veil's in good condition, and it's nice because you can kind of tuck it into the foldedness of the hat to store it, which is convenient. Here's another fun one. It's got this kind of pink and brown, I don't know if that's an owl feather, what kind of feathers those are, but this is a, I don't even know what to call this shape, but again, it's a nice, like, probably 1940s hat by Graham's Millinery in Tacoma? In Tacoma. Um, but it's kind of shallow on the inside. It's a very interesting textured straw. I, again, I have photos of me wearing this one, I'm sure, so I will put those in. And this one has chenille dots on its veiling, and it's just incredibly cute, especially with suiting. I just think this is super cute. Oof. I love hats. What can I say? This one is more of a 1940s, late, late 40s or 1950s hat. Again, this is not really straw. It's more of like a linen pulled over a base, and it has this kind of Juliet cap on the inside that has wire in it, so you can clamp it onto your head, like so. This one's really gonna mess up my hair, which it's probably already quite messy anyway, but you can wear it tilted back like this with this kind of sunray effect, I think it's very pretty, or you can tilt it more flat or forward. I'm pretty sure this one's a 1950s hat, really. But again, very nice with suiting. I've worn this with my navy blue Lillian suit before, um, so I can try and include some pictures of me wearing this one as well. Now, I can't lie. I just went to go eat dinner, and uh, I'm not going to put my lipstick back on. I'm sorry. <sighs> Things happen. I have another very cute straw here. This one's a little navy blue number. This one's failing. It is a bit in pieces, but because it's kind of just wispy up here anyway, I don't tend to mind. Oh, my computer just stopped making noise. How nice. Um, this one, again, has a Peter Shim to hold it onto the back of the head. Again, probably from the 1940s. Um, again, this like same kind of textured straw, only this time on the lip here, it has a bit of red straw folded in with the navy. And it's just a very cute detail. I mean, I already have another navy and red straw hat that I'll show you in just a second, so I don't need to keep both. But this one is so cute that I think I am going to keep both, so sorry about that. 
This one is by, oh, this one's a Studio Styles by Warner Brothers. So this one has a Studio Styles by Warner Brothers Designing Staff Hollywood label. And I think this was like a line of hats that Warner Brothers put out that were like, uh, supposed to be like things that were similar to things worn in their films or worn by their stars. Um, I think it was the idea behind that. So this one is a Warner Brothers Studios designed hat from the 1940s. But that does remind me of the hat really is the one out of the two I should keep, but it's different enough and I'm keeping both. Um, I have this fine woven straw, sort of tilted fedora, like mini fedora shape with these big celluloid beads on the front of it and a little bit of netting as well. This one is from Daniels and Fisher in Denver. This one is a local Denver hat. I don't think I purchased it from them. I bought this one online. So it's come home to Denver and um, now it's with me with this lovely veiling with tiny little chenille dots on it. Super cute. I have not worn this in photos yet, but I think I have worn this in a video before. But again, I cannot fully demonstrate because of hair ruining of it all, but oh, so cute. Love, love, love this hat. It is a bit faded on the top, but I forgive it because it's so gorgeous. And this box is just about full now as well, um, mostly with those straws again. Um, but this is a striped silk hat that Again, it's from the 1940s, and uh, this one was a bit of a splurge for me. I, again, I think I may have mentioned this one in my other video or in a haul or something before here on the channel, because this is like one of the more, the bigger investments I've made in my vintage collecting. A lot of times I'll get a hat for like $30. This one I think was 80 something. So it's um, on the higher end of what I've ever paid for a hat, but it's striped rainbow silk. So, you know. This one actually does have navy and black, so I could wear it with either, really, if I felt like mixing and matching. But I could wear this with almost almost any color. If I had a green suit, which I wish I did, but I did not, um, any color suit, really, this would go with. I think it's so cute and it matches nearly everything. But um, I had this on my wish list in, on Etsy for the longest time. And the thing about keeping things on your wish list for a long time, because they're out of your price range, which is what the case with this one was, is that eventually someone else will buy it and then you'll see it disappear and you'll know that it's never going to be yours. Um, and I just couldn't let that happen to this one. I couldn't let it be one of the ones that got away. So eventually I bit the bullet and I snapped this up even though it was quite a pricey one. Now I do have one more straw sitting here that would probably fit in here with these others. And this is a very small little 1930s, 1940s, probably early half of the 40s, tilted round straw hat here which does have most of its veil still and some flowers that are coming off of here. This one has like its original flowers, which are barely hanging on. And then I have some additional white flowers that I added myself. The veil that comes down like this in front. So you slip it on like this maybe, and then you pull the veil down over your face and it looks like that. Um, this style is pretty common in the catalogs. Um, you might be seeing this and some more catalogs soon here. It seems to be some kind of like woven cotton coated to look like straw. And again, it has a shiny coating on that and then shiny navy blue with white and cream colored flowers here, even though this one wanted to escape. So send it back inside here. So this is just a little funny one that again would be very pretty with like my navy blue rayon dress perhaps. Um, and it's always nice to have the ones where the veil is still intact. Just putting in a final piece of tissue here and then I will close this box up and it's pretty much uh so far it's like these two boxes are about what they were before in my old storage so I know what's in each of them um it's kind of like the biggest straws are in the flat one and then all the other ones are in here for now now I do have a small problem here and that is that some of the hats I have left are probably too big for these boxes um well a few of them are so let me show you those ones first and then I'll figure out where they're going to live. This is a black wool tilted 1940s hat. Again, it has a little bit of a cap on the inside and this one actually is a tiny bit small on me, but I'm gonna make it work. This is uh, in just such amazing condition. I feel like someone bought it last week. It's got these little bows tying up the edges and the shape on this. It's just divine. Um, so like it kind of goes like that and you would pen it on but with suiting 
and you can like even tilt this more. But with a suit or a trench coat or anything, oh, I just think the shape on this is divine. Um, this one was $50 and I feel like that is a screaming bargain for this just because the shape is so great and the um, condition. It's just, there's not a moth nibble on it. There's not a, a stain on it. It's a little bit dusty, but nothing a little brush can't handle. And like all the little bows around the edges are in such good condition. <sighs> it's just a stunner. So that one, I guess that one would fit in a box like this. So you can keep that nearby. This one is another 1940s hat. This one is navy blue felt here. We have a consumer protection label, but no other labeling. It is kind of like a oversized beret halo hat. So this is meant to sit on like the back of the head like this and like kind of stick up around your face like this. And again, I think this one would look really good with like 1940s suiting or 1940s dresses in general. Um, it's what it was designed to be worn with, I suppose. But this is a 40s hat in a good classic color and great for fall and winter. I have not been able to wear this one yet. I think I picked this one up last year in 2020, maybe early in 2020, but I just haven't been able to wear it out yet because I haven't been able to wear anything I picked out in 2020 out yet, really. But yeah, it's just got this little bit of a cap inside. It's again, like an oversized beret shape. And I guess you could wear it, you know, low over the hat, like a beret as well, um, or like a tilted oversized beret. But I just think that these look really fun on the back of the head, sticking up like this with like, if you have like your big pin up hair inside of here, like even if you had like a poodle going like up here in the front and then pin this on, it would look very, um, the film Cover Girl, if you've ever seen that, with uh, Rita Hayworth, which I highly recommend because the fashion in that film is divine. Oh, again, we have a winner. It will fit inside. Good. This one is definitely not gonna fit inside. This is a, another one of those like little clamp 1950s hats. This one is in black velvet, of course, with a little bow on it. And I've worn this quite a lot actually here on the channel um, in lookbooks and things like that. It's just a perfect velvet hat. Goes with nearly everything. Well, at least for me, because it's black. And I wear a lot of black things, don't I? Um, and black velvet accessories are fun. I have a black velvet belt and I have a black velvet gloves and I have black velvet handbags and then I can wear them with the hat. I like to match not only the color of my accessories but also the texture when possible. So it's nice to have a couple of velvet hat options which I do have a small, it's actually right here, little clamp velvet hat as well. So I have, when I want a big velvet hat, I can wear this one and where I want to, when I want a small velvet hat, I can wear this one. And this one here, which is like layered velvet bows with a little bit of veiling on it. I actually was wearing this one in my video about hats and people were like, I didn't know you were wearing a hat until you took it off. Because of course this blends in with my hair quite well. Um, but this one I think was like $10, 10 or $12. Again, bought this very early on in my collecting back when I did not have a lot of money to spend. Um, it's just like a wired cinema base with velvet bows on it. You'll see these come in like every color. <laughs> they were a big, very common hat in the 1950s and you'll see a lot of them for sale. Um, so do hold out for a bargain, don't pay I would not pay more than $50 for this style of hat just because another one will come along. This one was and is quite common. I have owned a yellow one of these in the past before as well, but I didn't wear it enough, so I sold that one, weirdly enough. But this one was $15. Again, I would have paid for this hat. If I saw it in a store and I didn't already own one, I would pay up to $60 probably for this hat because it's so practical for me in my wardrobe. I can wear this with so much, and I do wear this one quite often. Um, but again, I got it for $15 at a street market, a street fair here in Colorado, but that one's not really going to fit in here. So I don't know where that one's going to live. So it's going to live right there for right now. The other one that's too big is my only, at least that I know of, my only 1980s hat, which is this one. Um, this hat just is so Blade Runner to me that I saw it and absolutely had to have it. To me, it just looks like a uh, stylized, like surrealist version of 1940s and 50s hats. It's got this curve to it. And of course it's got um, the like nylon horsehair braid with uh, circles of wool ribbon, I guess, or like wool tape sewn down on it. And then it has the little cap on the inside. This one is a Jody G Bullman wool felt mark on it as well. But it's got this like, you know, saucer of nylon attached to it. But I just think it's fantastic. Um, so, you know, is it from the 1980s? Yes. So is Blade Runner. So, you know, you can see why I fell for 
this kind of a wackadoodle thing. I'm sure this isn't to everyone's taste, but um, it's just the kind of wacky 80s thing that I like. And it fits in very well with my 1940s suiting. Um, and I think I have worn this on the channel before, or at least shown it in a haul or something. I've shown it online here before, but it's my only 1980s hat. And I think you can see why I made an exception. <sighs> Let's try and get some of the wool. We can do like a, a 40s box and a 50s box, maybe. Then next up, I will, um, this is not a wool hat, but it is a 1940s hat. So I'm gonna put this one in here. We are recording, right? Yes, we are. Hopefully we're still recording audio. But this is a faux fur leopard hat. Um, it is faux, it's plasticky up close, but it's a quite nice faux fur hat here. Um, again, this is a, kind of like a, I don't know, wilted pillbox shape here, but still in miniature, not like the big late 50s pillboxes. So this is probably from the 1940s or early half of the 50s here. It does have its label inside. It says it's from Hutzlers of Baltimore, but it's got two little elastic ties, <laughs> I guess, loops that have these little combs on it. So you just kind of clip the combs into your hair and you can wear this tilted however you like on the back of the head. On the side is usually how I like to wear it. Here's a funny little one. And this, I think I found at an antique mall, the little base of it, at least. Um, this is just like a little felt base. And then I added these vintage clover flowers and a little bit of veiling onto here. Um, it didn't have anything on it to begin with. But this is just like a little 1940s tilted hat, little friend. Again, I think it would look cute with, you know, a 1940s dress, um, like my black rayon perhaps dress. I'm not sure if I've worn this in any pictures or have any pictures of me wearing this. If so, I will include them here, but I don't think so. Um, but this is another little like miniature 1940s tilted hat that I trimmed myself. So it's another one where it's like half vintage, half me really. Um, but I like the clover flowers. I think that's quite fun. I remember picking clover flowers like these and like stringing them into daisy chains in elementary school. So it's weirdly nostalgic for some reason. I have another more recent edition here, um, but this one is a 40s hat so I'll try and put it with its fellows. Um, this is made out of, hard to say, like mostly, I don't know, nylon, I guess is maybe what this is. Some sort of netting. Um, and then wire and grow grain. I'm not exactly sure even what this is made out of. This is, um, I bought this actually to be as an example in my collection, an example of these frilly hats that we were looking at in that catalog recently. These, I call them, um, I call them shower loofah hats because they look a little bit like a shower loofah. It looks like a coral reef or like some sort of sponge coral or sponge in general. Um, it just looks a little bit silly um, it looks like it's made out of horsehair, but I don't think it's made out of actual horsehair. I'm not quite sure, but it's just an example of these funny donuts of ruffle hats from the 1940s. And I didn't have anything like that in my collection. And I do think I want to try and make a very funny hat like this soon. So you'll be seeing that shortly as well. But this is a real 1940s example of this style. This one is by Susie Lee, made in California. Um, the veil has like little bobbles of the same kind of stuff on the uh, end of it. And this would be kind of worn on the head like so. And then you can tie the veil like that. So it would be kind of this tilted look like this. And again, with the 1940s suit or dress, it's a very strange shower loofah sponge sort of look. But I, <laughs> something about the weirdness of the 40s that I just really appreciate. So this to me seems like a late 40s um, to early 50s hat or version of this. And I'm really excited to have added it to the kind of study collection here at the Closet Historian. And of course, I will be happy to wear it as well. I do have another like 40s tilt fun topper here, but this one I made myself. So I'm going to actually put all the hats I made, I think, in a separate box just because they are less delicate, obviously, because they're not vintage. They're ones that I made, although this one does have vintage fruit on it. This is just a little circle, um, like button fascinator style hat with a bunch of ribbon and a bunch of vintage millinery fruit on it for a very fall time harvest themed hat. Again, just kind of like a little tiny tilted thing. It's more of a fascinator, really. It's so small, but a very silly 1940s hat and the 40s were all about silly hats so it works quite well for that. I am going to leave this one in its cookie container which is what this is. This is a um, 
Christmas cookie container that you can sometimes get on sale after Christmas at grocery stores. Um, so look for things like this because they make a pretty good hat box. Um, and of course this plastic, it's like, I don't know, some sort of poly plastic. So it's pretty inert and it makes a good hat box. But I have another whole box of hats to get through here. So let's keep on diving in. This is mostly the 40s ones. Well, actually, it looks like we're not going to have enough time to get through my entire collection here without this being a monumentally long video. So I am going to split this into two and the rest of my hat collection will be coming to you tomorrow. I hope to see you then.